Hi, I'm Richard Brown, Nick Griffin. Um, Richard, give me a quick piano lesson. What, what we got, Richard? I don't know what you want me to play. Just show me Nick, how do you feel your first performance went? I think I did pretty good, actually. Uh, Richie, how do you feel about your protege? I could have done better. <laughs> I'm gonna do my dance out here today, man. Time to go to work. Another work day. Ha-boom! Last Monday of practice, Arcido, how's it feel? Man, it's one. Uh, exciting, but at the same time, a little bit depressing. But it's all good. Let's get it. It's about execution. It has nothing to do, you know, and I hate to say this, there's no trick play calls. Everybody goes through, you know, you have a couple of things for each game and stuff like that, but it's about execution. Uh, when you come off the field, you've got to be sound, you've got to execute, you got to know what's going on. And the big part of execution is the first part of the play. I mean, that starts up front. When, when guys are getting free up front and coming, then that's not good. Usually the second part's going to be really bad. So, you know, we just need to make sure we're assigned the same. Sometimes you look, look on paper and just say, oh, it looks so simple as far as, you know, when you guys don't run for 100 yards, you lose games. If you run for 100, you've won, you've won every game. Is it as simple as that? Or? Well, I, I think the big thing, you know, in, in especially you know, in the SEC, it, it, if you run the football, it opens up so many different things. I think that's so critical. If you run the football, 
Uh, it opens up some of your play actions, you know, it makes your people a little bit more tentative on the pass rush, and it really helps you. I know, obviously, the, the biggest concern is to win the game, but is, is there any, you know, think at all about, like, oh, we want to send Bumpus out on a high note, or, you know, years past, some young guys have gotten involved, I mean, is there? You, you know, it's about opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, we tell them this all the time. You know, you only have so many opportunities in the game, you don't know when it's going to occur, and your opportunity may occur early, late, in the middle, we don't know, and it's your chance to make those plays. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't dictate that in the game. If you could, it'd be really, really a great game. I mean, you know, this is going to happen to the situation, but we don't know. And I think that's the, uh, the thing about football so exciting is the, you know it's, it's unpredictable at times. You don't really know what's going to happen, how the kids are going to react. You've practiced the situation over and over and over again, and now is the situation going to occur? Can they react to it? And that's where those guys in the NFL make a lot of money because they're great reactors to the plays. They understand it. We've been over for two weeks, three weeks now. Uh, they know where they're going to line up. We know where they're going to line up. I mean, it's not a situation where it's not going to be old. We don't. Yeah, do we have wrinkles? Everybody has wrinkles for a game like this. I've been a full secondary coach my whole career, and then uh, on other jobs I've either been safeties or corners or both uh, in different situations. So it's, uh, if that was the direction that it went in, you know, we, we would have just fine and you know, we would make the transition. And I know talking to some of the players about you know, the last few games, everything, they, they keep missing communication issues during games and on the field. Do you feel like you guys have been able to correct some of that here in this month leading up to the bowl game? Yeah, I think so. You know, it's uh, the, the thing that you run into from week to week is that you play different teams with different offenses and different schemes. And every time you can't go out there and just line up and do the same thing over and over and over and over because you you know, they'll expose you one way or the other. So sometimes when you have a communication issue, it's uh, it's in the transition or it's in the uh, trying to communicate something that you may you might have seen during the week, but only that's the only time that you saw it. Do you think it, it might be something that could almost help a little bit that it's just one voice going to the entire secondary, maybe a cohesive, I guess, might be a good way to put it? You, you know, you have pluses and minuses on both sides. Mm -hmm. And one reason, uh, one voice is good, but then also you have a nickel dime package where you got six DBs out there at one time. Yeah. So one guy's watching six people at one time schematically. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you have is from week to week, like I said earlier, it depends on who you're playing. Yeah. If you're playing, you know, if you're playing a team that uh, uh, runs a lot of different formations and shifts and formations and things like that, you two people are better than one because one person may not be able to make all those adjustments. But there are pluses and minuses to both, you know. And uh, some people do it with one secondary coach and some people do it with two secondary coaches. So it just depends on, uh, you know, what direction that... that uh, uh, this group that's leaving, you work with, like you mentioned, you know, Corey, you know, you know, a pretty special group that, that, that's come through here. I'm sure it's kind of relishing the last few days. Yeah, yeah, it, and it, it's exciting for me to be able to uh, work with those guys, especially having worked with Banks when he first started his career at safety, yeah. and now he's a corner. And uh, I, I made a joke to him and said, uh, all right, Jonathan, you thought you got away from me, but I'm back. I got you back now. All right, Corey, you thought you got away from me. I got you back. They say, okay, coach, let's go. So they, they're excited about it also. So. Were, you, were you surprised Melvin left? And, I mean, did, did you? Well, you know, it, it, this this is a, uh, uh, a business where, I don't know. I, I don't know if you would say surprise, but there's always good coaches. People are looking for them, you know, and uh, opportunities are going to come for for people in this profession and and, and in every profession. So uh, I think he just did what he felt was best for him and at this time in his career. So surprised, I, you know, maybe shocked <laughs> when it happened, but surprised that it happened. I mean, you don't. Know. I mean. You really don't. Uh, there's so much moving in college football nowadays. Pro, pros hadn't started yet. They'll be moving here in a little bit after next week. So, but he'll be missed. He's a good man, good coach, and I really enjoyed it. My time working with him. That's good. Yeah, kind of motivated by some of the recent struggles in the run game. 
what's it been like to you? Know? Uh, uh, yeah, we plan this game. We plan on plan on moving the ball more on the ground also, as far as in the air also too. Um, the old line, they are gonna get the job. I feel like they're gonna get the job done. Um, this game coming up, uh, like I said, we struggled a little bit um, in the past the last three to four games. We struggled to run the ball like we wanted to, but uh, I feel like we're gonna pick it up this game. And, and, and keep it moving. When you look at the Ole Miss game uh, and the other games that you struggled, what kind of jumps out on the field? It was just um, the right, we, we didn't have the right fits on certain plays. Um, just they was giving us different looks that we didn't expect. Some things like that. It just it just we can we can hit the home run. We just got to make sure we we stay on blocks and just fit like we should. That's all it is. Just make sure we stay on the blocks. You guys, look at the earlier earlier part of the season and realize that hey, we can move the ball. We can be explosive. We can get back to that. Yeah, we, we definitely we, we know we can move the ball on, on anybody defense. Uh, we just make sure we got to go back to all the basic things that we 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 learned to do in the past. To, to also to move the ball, and I feel like as uh, long as we're on the same page, everybody, everybody on the same page, the quarterback, uh, running back, receivers, offensive line, if we all on the same page, and we are, we will get more explosive plays. You guys, you look at it on paper, and you know, maybe you can oversimplify things when you do that, but you guys have not won a game. You've rushed for less than 100 yards as a unit, and then when you have rushed for over 100 yards, you've won every game. Do you think that's kind of the key going into this one is to clip 100 yards, be able to get some good yardage on the ground? Well, yeah, Coach, that's the first thing Coach Muslim was telling us. Uh, we need to run the ball on these guys, be able to run the ball. Uh, we know we can throw the ball, but we, as long as we, we be able to run the ball pretty well, you can pretty much guarantee the victory. Uh, as long as everybody just do their job like up front, offensive line, it starts up front with the offensive linemen. Um, as long as they, like I said, they stay on their blocks, um, they can date. It's up to those guys. They're going to get a job done. I feel like they're going to get the job done because uh, we've been practicing hard. They had a good day of practice today also, too. Uh, everybody came out with a high intensity, uh, ready to practice, and we ended on a good note also, too. So. How much help do you expect from uh, Derek and Josh? I expect a lot of help out of them. Those guys, uh, those guys they, they didn't have a long way. Uh, they, didn't got, they get better and better like, like every day. I, I watch them a lot. Uh, I watch film and, I, and I, I watch them also too, and not just myself. I watch them. I see if they're doing wrong. I try to help them also, and they just got better, got a whole lot better since uh, training camp. Something. How much does this game also maybe a little bit about bragging rights? Everybody talks about Big Ten speed and SEC speed. Um, well, everybody knows SEC is the best conference in the, in the world, really. Um, and like I say, the speed is unbelievable in SEC. Um, and I watch a lot of Big Ten, and they don't move like we move. So we'll see what happens um, come game day. They're, they're pretty good against the run statistically. What do you see from the run defense as well? Oh, they, they have some big guys up there uh, up front. Um, those, those pretty big, stout guys. Um, they can stop the run pretty good. Uh, and they, they've been doing a good job with that like all year. And uh, we watch film on those guys. They have big linebackers also too up front. And they also can stop the run. But as long as, like I said, as long as our offensive line stay on blocks and do their job and run back to their job also too, we should have uh, 100 plus yards on the ground. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it.